The patrons have spoken, and this time we have Blossom. Generation 2 introduced this happy flower as an alternative final evolution to Oddish, evolving from gloom when exposed to the new Sunstone. Those who remember Pikachu's rescue adventure, the short that preceded Pokemon 2000, will fondly remember the group of Blossom that led their fellow Pokemon in dance. Today, we're going to examine how Blossom's groovy flower power left its mark on the competitive scene, man. And so we ask, how good was Blossom actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Unfortunately, the existence of Meganium completely neuters any reason to use Blossom in its debut generation of OU. Both Pokemon were meant to use their grass typing defensively, and Meganium matches Blossom's special defense while eclipsing it in HP and defense. Even Meganium's higher speed was relevant in staving off threats like Machamp and Vaporeon, which outsped Blossom. The only advantage Blossom had over Megan was Sleep Powder, but that just wasn't enough, especially since the Rest and Sleep Talk combination was everywhere in Gen 2. Thus, Blossom went to NU, and fortunately, it was quite excellent there. It was one of the few Pokemon that could switch into the Slow Twins safely and actually threaten them out. Many teams weren't able to safely switch in Pokemon that actually threatened the Slow Twins, i.e. Scyther or Electabuzz, since they would get hit hard by a Stab Attack or crippled by Thunder Wave. Instead, players were forced to enter a PP draining stalemate with their own Rest Talker like Hypno, Blastoise, or their own Slow Twin. Blossom being able to threaten these Pokemon was as unique as it was valuable in pressuring the opponent, being able to spread paralysis with stun spore, crippling offensive responses like Scyther, or adding to Spike's chip damage with Leech Seed, wearing down bulkier responses. Blossom's list of defensive utility didn't end there, though. It was terrific at dealing with the otherwise hard-to-handle electric types in Ampharos, Magneton, and Electabuzz. Being able to resist the stab earthquake of the tier's most dangerous Pokemon, Needle Queen, was also a terrific trait to have. From there, it could threaten to cripple Needle Queen with stun spore, or to switch out as Needle Queen used Ice Beam or Fire Blast, making it easier for a non-earthquake resistant Needle Queen check, like a Slow Twin, to switch in. Paralysis support was excellent at not just neutering opposing offensive threats, but supporting the threats on Blossom's own team. It made slower Pokemon like Granbull even more dangerous than they already were. Overall, Blossom was one of GSC UU's most effective Pokemon, thanks to its crucial role as a sturdy defensive pivot against some of the tier's most dangerous offensive threats. Blossom was unfortunately not able to carry its UU status over into the third generation, as Meganium now resided in the tier, among other excellent grass types like Cradilly and Vileplume. As such, Blossom dropped to NU, and fortunately, once again, it established an excellent niche in the metagame. Its main set was the Sunny Day Chlorophyll Sweeper, taking advantage of the fact that not everything had max EVs and thus bulked to dish out some serious pain. While it did compete with Tangela, whose higher special attack was admittingly nice for a sweeping Pokemon, Blossom did something hugely important that Tangela couldn't dream of it. It was able to take an Ice Beam from and set up on one of the metagame's most dangerous Pokemon, Huntail. Plus, it was still a legitimate threat in its own right, outspeeding the entire metagame in Sun and packing a punch between its incredibly powerful Stab Solar Beam that dropped neutral targets with ease, especially with Spikes down, and Pseudo Stab on the excellent coverage provided by Hidden Power Fire. Even if it faced a Pokemon that walled it like Golbat, it could put that Pokemon out of commission with Sleep Powder. Of course, Blossom wasn't only an offensive Pokemon. While the Sunny Day Sweeper was its most common set, its especially defensive variant was an absolute juggernaut that stopped many of the tier's most threatening Pokemon in their tracks. In addition to the aforementioned Huntail, which it can now take two Ice Beams from, it also handled Haunter and Plusle. For this reason, it was a staple of many balance and stall teams. It was resoundingly difficult to break and was a major factor in making those teams such consistent choices. Part of what made it so good besides just its defense utility, which again was terrific, was that it was also adept at pressuring the opponent. Even though it was a bulky Pokemon that wasn't exactly threatening KOs left and right, the combination of Sleep Powder and Stun Spore was dangerous in its own right, especially when Blossom was placed on more balanced teams that liked to run a hard hitter or two like Choice Band Hitmonchan. Toxic, of course, was also a massive threat against opposing defensive Pokemon like Chimeco and Sableye. Overall, Events NU Blossom was an excellent Pokemon. It was once again one of the metagame's most important defensive of pillars, but thanks to the introduction of split EVs and abilities, it was now a terrific offensive threat as well. Generation 4 was where things started to go downhill for Blossom, even all the way down in NU. Thanks to everyone's favorite constant from each new generation, Power Creep, Meganium, Vileplume, 
and Cradilly found themselves in NU. Previously, Blossom had managed to escape them by simply going to the next tier down, but there was nowhere left for it to go, and in a turn of events as sad as it was predictable, it got just about no usage by virtue of being completely and utterly outclassed. It wasn't even that it was bad per se. On its own merits, it was a fine, even a good defensive grass type, strictly defensive, as there was no chance for it to pull off any sunny day tricks with Exeggutor and Victory Bell running around. The problem was that in absolutely every realistic single scenario where Blossom did well in checking waters and electrics, its job would have been done better and then some by one of its many excellent competing grass types. If your number one goal wasn't to win at all costs, then yeah, Blossom would do well and look adorable while doing it. However, thanks to the cutthroat nature of the competitive scene, this is where things went. And sadly for our flowery friend, it just wasn't ever the most optimal choice. Blossom wound up in NU in black and white too, nobody's surprised. Despite the introduction of Drought to OU, nobody was going to choose it as their Chlorophyll Sweeper, especially with the slap in the face to all grass types that was Chlorophyll Venusaur. Anyway, down in NU, Blossom was still majorly outclassed by Vileplume once again, and the newly Evil Light packing Roselia and Tangela, who packed the amazing Spikes and Regenerator, respectively, didn't help matters much. Blossom did have the advantage of being able to check special threats like Samurott, Ludicolo, and Masharna, but but it was outclassed at this by another grass type, Cradilly, who boasted the ability to also check Tier King Charizard and whose instant recovery move had double Moonlight's PP. Blossom was just utterly outdone defensively, and since Victory Bell and Exeggutor were around, offensively as well. It got so little usage that it was among the first generation of Pokemon that were deemed unfit for use in any singles tier, and were thus untiered. The tearing rung's cruelty knows no bounds, even against an adorable dancing flower who wants to use its Dream World ability healer to, well, heal everyone. Gen 6 offered some hope of respite for Blossom. Thanks to Power Creep, there was no way it was going to cut it in NU, but there was now a new tier, PU, which was even lower than NU. Vileplume wasn't going to be around as it was busy lighting up NU. Plus, Blossom now got Moonblast. That had to count for something, right? Sadly, wrong. These promises of better days wound up being empty, as Roselia and Tangela were excellent PU Pokemon as well, so Blossom the wall was already pretty much entirely out of the picture. Even more so when one realized that Gorgeist had been added to the mix and was thoroughly terrific. However, there was a glimmer of hope once again. Victory Bell and Exeggutor were both too strong for PU and were thus banned. So perhaps this was the time for Blossom to assume the mantle of Sunny Day Sweeper once again? Sadly, no, because it was outclassed once again. By freaking Weepin Bell, of all things, who wasn't even as strong as Blossom, sitting at base 85 as opposed to Blossom's 90. However, this slight difference was more than made up for by Weepin Bell's ferocious offensive coverage. Stab Sludge Bomb and a fiery Weather Ball, which made Hidden Power Fire newly nerfed to 60 base power, looked absolutely paltry. There was just no hope for Blossom whatsoever, and it dropped to untiered for the second consecutive generation. Gen 7 extended some more tangible hope for Blossom's PU viability in the form of some excellent new moves. Quiver Dance is one of the best boosting options in the game, further augmented by another power boost in the form of Z Crystals, and Strange Sap is one of the most devastating offensive defensive tools that a naturally bulky Pokemon like Blossom would surely make great use of. In theory, with Quiver Dance boosting its special defense and Strange Sap lowering opponent's attack stats, Blossom would be covered against hits on both sides of the spectrum while remaining healthy between Strain Sap and Boosted Giga Drain, allowing it to accrue multiple boosts and then sweeping. It could even blow past Dragon types Altaria and Drampa with Moonblast, or protect itself from debilitating status, namely Toxic, with Safeguard. Arceus, bless it, this set wasn't just a paper threat. It was quite decent and entirely unique in what it did. So why, pray tell, did Blossom fall to untiered for the third generation in a row? Well, it was entirely due to Victory Bell, who itself spammed Strain Sap to incredible effect and absolutely dominated the tier. It was almost too good not to use. For this reason, just about every top player spammed the living daylights out of Victory Bell, and there was nary a thought left for our beloved Blossom, even though it was actually viable for the first time in generations. Sad as it was, when your competition is one of the metagame's most excellent spammable Pokemon, you're not going to get used very much, even if you do have a nice legitimate niche. And poor Blossom is a great example of that. At the time of this video, Blossom is in Generation 8's PU, a tier still in its early stages. Only time will tell if it will be able to remain in the metagame or if it will fall to untiered. Roselia offers stiff competition, but perhaps with no Victory Bell around, Blossom's unique Strength Sap Quiver Dance combination will be enough to make it a genuine lowest tier Pokemon once again. 
And that's it. So how good was Blossom actually? Well, it started out as an excellent UU Pokemon in its debut generation, epitomizing the bulky grass type for that setting. It checked several huge threats and supported its team nicely with status and leash seed. It followed that up with another excellent showing in Gen 3 NU, where it also expanded its repertoire to include a fierce sunny day chlorophyll sweeper, unleashing surprisingly powerful solar beams upon anyone foolish enough to think it wasn't capable of dishing out real damage. Sadly, in the generations after that, power creep resulted in NU and afterwards PU, becoming saturated with other excellent grass types that Blossom couldn't hope to compete with, resulting in four generations of pretty much complete non-existence. Hopefully, it'll be able to turn things around in Gen 8, as it does have the promising combination of Quiver Dance and Strength Sap, but it wouldn't be surprising if it didn't. It's a real shame that blossom has been dealt such a rough hand. Also, there is no notable usage of Blossom in VGC. Surprise, surprise. Thanks for watching, everyone. And of course, a huge thank you to the patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for this Pokemon for this month's Painted Pick. And as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Blossom? How would you change it? How would you make it better than like Victory Bell or something? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.